In the last general elections, Barisan National garnered 47% of the votes cast, and for that, they won 60% of all parliamentary seats. The Canberra Times of Australia described this win by Najib, premised on a gerrymander. Now, today, the Election Commission prepares the nation to go to a delimitation exercise. What are the chances that with this exercise, we will see an overall improvement in the electoral process in the country? Will we be able to move away from the skewered results of the 13th general election? In the studio with me today is my friend Wong Pang Yao of Titak Malaysia, who I hope will share with us his thoughts on this very important delimitation process that the nation will soon be going through. Wong, welcome to Riot Times. Thank you, Harris, for having me. Right. I know Tindak Malaysia very well because I've worked with you all in the past. But for the benefit of viewers who perhaps know very little of what Tindak Malaysia stands for, could you very quickly share with us what does Tindak Malaysia, what have they done before and what are they doing now? Tindak Malaysia was formed in 2008 as a website. Our focus was on education, okay. empowerment, education, empowerment, mobilization, and action with respect to electoral reform. Our focus is purely on electoral reform. Okay, electoral reform, um, but that was also something that per se, per se was pushing for electoral reforms. Any difference or any similarity between the work of Bursi and the work of uh, Tindak Malaysia? Our focus is mainly on solutions. We identify problems we uh, particularly expect on electoral reform. For example, in the run-up to GE 13, we felt there, were, there was a lack of polling agents, Pachaba. So, we started training polling agents. And in the process, I believe we trained a couple of thousand polling agents. This was for the last election or the 12th G? For the last election. Last election. Okay. Pang Yao, help us with this. Uh, I mentioned the word just now, gerrymander. Uh, we also hear this one other phrase, malapportionment. And of late, I keep hearing another one, equalization. Uh, for the, again, for the benefit of viewers, could you first explain what is malapportionment? Malapportionment refers to inequality of seats. For example, if you are a voter in Kappa, okay, you are one of 144,000. These are the 144,000 registered voters for the constituency of Kappa? Yes, okay. parliamentary constituency. Okay. And if you are a voter in Sabah, Bernam, okay, you are one of 37,000 voters. So your, okay, your point, the point that you're making is, uh, Kappa has 144,000 registered voters, uh, Sabah Pernam has 30? 7,000. Okay. That comes to a ratio of nearly 390%. Oh, okay, but you talk about the ratio of 390. What would be the ideal ratio? Ideally, it should be 1 to 1. Uh, 1 to 1 meaning uh, if, if, if it's uh, if it's 144,000 in Kappa, ideally Sabah Pernam should also be 144. More or less. More or less. Or less. Okay, so the ideal is equality. Yes. Uh, allowing for a margin of variation. Yes. Now, malapportionment then would be where the uh, the difference is beyond the permitted variation. Correct. Would, would that be right? Yes. So, uh, in the example that you quoted, uh, Kappa 144,000, Sabah Pernam 37,000. Yes. Uh, that is too big a variation, and there we then see a serious case of malapportionment. Would that be right? Yes. And in Sarawak, we also have similar problems. For example, in Labas, okay. it is less than 19,000 voters. All right. And in Stampin, it is 84,000 voters. Okay. So again, there is a ratio of 450 percent. Going back, the ideal variation of the ideal ideal uh, ratio should be one to one. More or less. That's the ideal. Uh, yes. Okay. That's malapportionment. Help us understand gerrymander. Gerrymander is a little bit more complicated okay. because it involves the concentration of support within a constituency and to achieve that, you may draw your boundary lines all over the place. It is probably easier if you look at the reverse of gerrymandering, something that is evenly drawn. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, 
I think it's important for viewers to understand. So you said it's easier to look at the reverse. Yes. Walk us through this. Walk us through this. Ideally speaking, a constituency, if it's perfectly round, circle, okay. Yes, it has got a very good ratio. Okay. Or you could have a rectangle or a square. Okay. These are the shapes that will indicate very minimum gerrymandering. Okay. However, if you have a shape that looks like a snake okay. or a salamander, All right. which was the origin of this word gerrymander, okay. uh, then you tend to be a little bit suspicious about the motives of the electoral management body who drew those boundaries. Okay, so uh, if, if I'm, I'm trying to see if I understand you. What you're saying is um, when the constituency boundaries start to take odd shapes, odd patterns, it may be indicative that they have been drawn with a view to concentrate um, support support within that constituency. In favor of a particular political party. Okay. Uh, I think I got you there. Having said that, having said that, I think it is also important to understand that the shape of a constituency is dictated by the shape of the polling district or Daira Mundi. Alright. Because the way you analyze and build a constituency is by accumulating this Daira Mundi, which you call DM. Okay. So if you have a DM which has a funny shape, you end up with your constituency having a funny shape. Would you normally see a um, um, gerrymander going together with malapportion? I mean, do they necessarily go hand in hand? What we have found from two exercises in analyzing the whole country, if you have equalization, it is quite hard to gerrymander. Okay, I'm going to come back to you on equalization in a while. Uh, Kendra Times said Najib won the 13G on a gerrymander. Um, and today, you've also pointed out to us the serious issue of malapportionment. Now, this notion of equalization in the context of the problem of gerrymander and malapportionment, help us understand what equalization is. If you have seats having all equal, let's say Slango, the average number of seats, which you call the electoral quotient, mm -hmm. is 93,000. Okay. It means that the voting population for the whole of Slango, divided by 22 parliamentary seats, okay. is 93,000. Okay. In equalization, every seat is aimed for to be 93,000 plus or minus. Okay. In our exercise, we have to take into account the fact that the number of dunes is not an integer of the number of parliament. Okay. Meaning, if you have 22 parliament, you should either have 22 dune, 44 dune, 66 dune, or 88 dune. All right. But today, we have 56 dune. This is in Slango. In Slango, right. which is not a round number. Mm. Because of that, we have a serious anomaly whereby certain parliament is going to have two dun and some parliament is going to have three dun mm. and you have to compensate by making the three dun parliament bigger and the two dun parliament smaller. Why does that come about? Where you have some parliamentary uh, constituencies with uh, two duns and some with three. Why does that come about? Well, this is a quite unusual situation because overseas experts point to us that this is not normal. Mm. If you are talking about equalization for a parliament, mm. you also must have equalization for a doom. Mm. And once you do that, the power to doom ratio must be constant throughout the state. Okay. Um, PY, I'm going to stop you there. Um, we'll, we're going to take a break on this segment. We'll come back tomorrow and hopefully tomorrow um, I will get PY to share with us a little bit more on this notion of equalization, which I believe uh, is what Tindak Nature is pushing for today. Yes. So uh, we'll see you all tomorrow.